Welcome back. If you're running your own self-made super fund and you're not sure if you're following the rules as closely as you should, my next guest says, beware the ATO is in crackdown mode. Uh, Peter Burgess of AMP, welcome to the show. Peter, How scared here. should we be about the ATO on this one? Well, these are some new penalties that the ATO is likely to have mm. uh, from 1 July 2014, so it's, it's not law yet. Uh, but this is part of a package of reforms that uh, the previous government had announced, right. uh, the purpose of which is to improve the integrity of the sector. Now, we shouldn't read into this that there is an integrity problem with the self managed super fund sector. Mm. Uh, the review of the superannuation industry that was commissioned by the previous government and completed a few years ago yep. uh, found that the self managed super fund sector is performing very strongly. Mm. Uh, and uh, but what they did also find is that when it comes to penalties uh, that can be imposed on trustees who perhaps do the wrong thing, don't, don't comply with the rules, yeah. the regime is quite inflexible uh, and the penalties themselves can be quite severe. So it's not surprising and it's understandable why the ATO don't uh, often levy penalties uh, unless it's a very significant breach of the rules. So what are they doing with the penalties? How are they changing that? Well, they're introducing three new penalties. Yeah. Um, so in addition to the current penalties which the ATO has, yeah. uh, that they can impose... And they're financial the ones that can slug your, your tax concession, in a sense. Could now ask one of them? Yeah, the most significant one is that they can take away your compliance status, which means that you lose the tax concessions that we've Fifteen percent becomes 45 plus... Medicare well, that's right, and a, and a tax penalty can also apply, which could be as high as almost half the, the, the fund assets. So it's okay. quite a severe penalty. That's yeah. why I was saying it's, it's understandable they don't do that unless it's a very significant. And I reckon they save that up for those small business people who decide when they've got a cash flow problem, they'll just borrow from the super fund. You can't do that. Well, that's right. That, that's one of the most significant breaches. Right. Uh, in the last financial year, there was uh, around 18,000 contraventions reported by auditors. Of that, of that nature? Well, not of that nature, yeah. but 18,000 in total, of uh, which a significant portion were relating to situations where the fund was lending money to uh, related businesses and so forth, which yeah. you can't do. No, uh, can't. Well, there's a 5% limit, but mm. uh, uh, above that you can't do it. So mm. um, these new penalties, uh, for example, there's, there's a new uh, education direction. Um, so what this will do is give the ATO the power uh, to force or direct uh, trustees to undertake some education. Send them back to super school. Well, fortunately, uh, the way we think this will work is it won't be uh, a classroom style course. It'll be an online course. Yeah. So thankfully, you won't have to turn up to a classroom and confess your breaches yeah. to everyone else in the room has also breached the rules. Yeah. Uh, so we it's think. Like, it, like an AA meeting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so, a self managed super fund trustee and I broke the rules. Yes, yeah. well, it's, and so it's, it's, so it's going to be an online course. That's good. It, That's a good idea. Yeah, we, we know a fair bit about these penalties, even though the legislation hasn't been reintroduced yet. Mm. Uh, we know a fair bit about how these penalties will work because there was legislation introduced it to the Parliament last year, uh, but uh, it wasn't enacted by the time the uh, election was called, so the bill lapsed. Yeah. Um, so the legislation... They were distracted by a whole lot of things, weren't they? There was a bit going on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so the legislation will be reintroduced again, but we don't expect it to be significantly different to what it was last year. So okay. hence we have a pretty good idea as to what these new penalties will look like. So one of them is this education direction. The other one is uh, uh, a rectification direction. Sounds uh, painful, but it's uh, <laughs> where the trustees can, or where the ATO can actually direct the trustees yeah. to fix the breach. So okay. under the current law, they don't have that power. No. Uh, they have to wait for the trustees to initiate how they're going to fix the breach. Let's take the example before. Um, someone lends more than 5% of their super fund to their business because yes. their business is in trouble. Say it's $100,000. They, they actually could direct that business, if need be, to borrow the 100000 and put it back in the super fund. That's right, to rectify the breach. Mm. Now, now, the third one they'll have uh, is an administration penalty. Uh, now, this will be a sliding scale. It will be based on penalty units, uh, with the penalty units uh, representing the severity of the breach. Mm. Uh, so cause that's one of the problems with the current regime. It's very inflexible. It's an all-or-nothing approach. Yep. This sliding scale will allow the ATO to impose penalties, mm. uh, depending on the severity of the breach. So uh, the example you gave there, uh, a $10,200 fine or mm. penalty uh, would be imposed to the trustees who breach the borrowing rules or breach the, uh, the rules regarding uh, uh, lending to related parties and so forth. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so are they actually raising the financial penalties or they think that they're, they're tough enough as they stand? Well, these are, these are new penalties yeah. on top of what's already there. Yeah, okay. uh, so uh, the, what was uh, concluded as part of the review was that it was, the, they weren't flexible enough. So the ATO did need to have some more flexibility uh -huh. to impose penalties which were appropriate given the severity of the breach. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're seeing this sliding scale, which you know, is, is, a, is a really good idea and it will help the ATO to impose penalties yeah. depending on the severity of the breach. Um, if we take away 
the, the kind of mistake we talked about where a small business lens, uh, yes. a super fund lens to a small business over the 5% limit. Um, do you think that, that the, the, the kinds of problems we're seeing with self-managed super funds are often because either people are too busy, their accountants put them into a self-managed super fund, they don't, they don't know what they have to do, and the accountant doesn't pick them up, the auditor says, well, basically what I'm seeing is okay. But they are still breaking some rules. Do you think that a lot of people would probably avoid a lot of these problems if they signed up for an administration service where they actually tick the boxes to make sure all these things are done? Well, for sure. I think a professional administrator such as AMP can certainly help you here. Yeah. Uh, to, oh, to you, help you, you're an administration service too. Absolutely. Of course you would be. Why wouldn't you be in yeah. this so year? If, if you're having difficulty or it's, it's time consuming, you know, the record keeping side of things yeah. as well as the reporting side of things, and some mm. of these things will be breaches under these new provisions, and yeah. uh, you may incur a penalty because of a $1,700 yeah. penalty if you're yeah. not preparing financial statements and so forth. Mm. All these things are typically what a professional administrator would do. Yeah. Uh, so if you're concerned about these penalties, uh, if you're administering your own fund and you're finding it time consuming, certainly a professional administrator can help you uh, to comply with these, these provisions. Yeah. Do you think these changes have been driven by the ATO, even though government has introduced some legislation? And this is a reflection that the ATO is worried that if they don't start rattling the cage, slack procedures might go on for too long. Well, I think it's more about the industry uh, calling for this. Uh, as part of this Cooper review, this review of the superannuation industry which yep. was commissioned by the government, uh, a lot of submissions that they received were from industry uh, calling for these type of penalties to apply. Uh, more flexibility, sliding scales uh, and so forth. And, and particularly the education one, um, you know, that's, that, that will be used by the ATO in situations where uh, the trustees have breached the rules, uh, but the breach was due to their lack of understanding or knowledge. And when you think there was 18,000 and contraventions reported, uh, you know, a significant number of those are probably due to a lack of understanding. So we think that's probably likely to be used quite uh, quite a lot by the ATO. And how many funds do we have out there at the moment? Uh, well, there's over 500,000 now. So 18,000 on 500,000, have you worked that percentage out? Well, it's 2% of funds okay. uh, have uh, breaches reported. Now, some funds have more than one contravention, hence yeah. 18,000. But the mm. statistics are showing that it's around 2%. Not it's bad, really, when you think about 2%. Well, that's right. That's what I was saying earlier on. We shouldn't read into this that we have an integrity issue with the sector. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's around 2% of funds uh, have contraventions, and it's been that figure now for some time. Just away from the, 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 the tax office aspect, some of the complaints or worries in newspapers, and, and some regulators have raised question marks over it. Are you guys worried that there's too much interest in self-managed super fund trustees chasing property at the moment? And and are you seeing it, because I've had people on my show say, well, people are interested in property, but there's still a lot of it is small businesses putting their business premises in. It's not all these terrible self-managed super fund trustees making life hard for first-home buyers by turning up to auctions. Well, what, what is your data telling you about well, that? Well, it's very much like that. Uh, if you look at uh, well, the ATO data as well as our own data, uh, you know, it's, we're not seeing a significant uptake in the number of people going into these type of arrangements. Mm. They're very cautious. So these are complex arrangements. Uh, yeah. You do need professional advice. They are difficult to put together. So we're finding that clients uh, are typically very cautious about putting the borrowing through a self-managed super fund. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we, we don't believe it's out of control, certainly, in, uh, as, as some would suggest it is. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right, because it, there's always been lucky people who maybe get in their high 40s, early 50s, and, and they've paid off their home loan, yes. and they look for an investment property. So they've always been competing with first-home buyers, and now they might just put in their self-managed super fund rather than having it outside. But I still think it's the same kind of people yes. who have always been there, who can always, you know, knock a first home buyer off the perch because they're in a better financial position. That's right and it's still you know commercial properties and the, the small business owners being able to uh, sell their properties to their funds and lease it back and so forth that's you know certainly still the most common use of direct property within yeah. these, uh, these self managed super. And I think it's a pretty good strategy for a lot of small businesses. Yeah. Mate thanks for joining us. Thank you. Always good to see you.